President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Akufu Addo. Your Excellency, if you could use the podium. Your Excellency, if you could use this podium. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Kenya, William Ruto, Your Excellency, Mohammed Gazun, Gazwani, Chair of the African Union and President of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, the President of the World Bank, Mr. J. Banga, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the dynamic President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency William Ruto, for the invitation to speak at the summit of the International Development Association, IDA, and for the hospitality of the Kenyan government. This gathering serves as a platform for collaboration and a catalyst for transformative change. As we convene here, we're tasked with a great responsibility to articulate the case for an ambitious and robust 21st replenishment of the IDA, one that will pave the way for sustainable development and prosperity, not only for the African continent, but also for all nations in need. The challenges we face in the 21st century are immense and multifaceted. From the continuing effects of poverty and inequality to the urgent threats posed by climate change and pandemics, our world is in need of bold and innovative solutions. Yet amidst these challenges lies an opportunity, an opportunity to redefine our approach to development, to reimagine our priorities and to forge a path towards a more equitable and sustainable future. The IDA, with its long-standing commitment to poverty eradication and inclusive growth, stands as a testament to the power of international cooperation. Over the years, it has played a pivotal role in lifting millions out of poverty, expanding access to education and health care, and building resilient communities. However, as we look ahead, we must acknowledge that our work is very far from finished. Millions still live in poverty. Millions still lack access to basic services. And millions suffer from the effects of environmental degradation and climate change. Excellencies, all of us are aware, for example, of the enormous infrastructure challenge confronting Africa. The African Development Bank, AFDB, estimates Africa's infrastructure needs at between 130 to 170 billion United States dollars annually, with a financing gap of between 68 billion at $180 billion annually. The infrastructure gap has a negative impact on our competitiveness. It constrains our development, stifles business growth, trade investment, and service delivery, as well as the overall progress towards inclusive and sustainable development. Mobilizing finance and investment remains central to Africa's development needs and attaining the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Our biggest challenge is not a scarcity of financing, but overcoming a global economic system that has not allocated sufficient long-term resources to support Africa's economic transformation. That is why boosting the resources of the IDA, whose ability to generate concessional financing reflects, represents an effective way to respond to the obstacles that African countries 
encounter in the present global system is so critical for the prospects of Africa's development. With the burgeoning population, our challenges, our challenges hinge on our ability to provide reliable electricity, affordable and decent housing, improved transformation, transformation networks, education and health infrastructure. Without this, we will be staring down again the possibility of a lost decade characterized by suboptimal GDP growth. Excellences, more than half of African countries are debt distressed. Ghana is currently going through the restructuring of her debts under the G20 Common Framework, which we all know is a slow process and needs to be stepped up. At the same time, we're suffering from the increasing effects of clim climate change and the devastations caused by COVID-19 and other adverse global developments. Doubling IDA to provide more concessional facilities to our countries is of utmost importance to help us cope with these challenges. The intersection between climate and debt makes imperative the need to reform the global financial architecture in a way that delivers more resources to our countries to help address the current poly crisis affecting our development and that of future generations. Therefore, the time has come for us to redouble, redouble our efforts, to recommit ourselves to the principles of solidarity and shared responsibility, and to unlock the full potential of the IDA. This replenishment presents us with a unique opportunity to mobilize resources, to leverage partnerships, and to scale up our impact. It is a chance to invest in the future, in education, in healthcare, in infrastructure, and in the resilience of our communities. But let us be clear, this is not just about funding. This is about vision, about leadership, and about political will. It is about recognizing that development cannot be achieved through aid, but requires a comprehensive approach that addresses the root causes of poverty and inequality. It is about empowering communities, building capacity, and fostering innovation. And it is about ensuring that no one is left behind, that the most vulnerable amongst us are given the support and opportunity they need to thrive. In conclusion, I want to state that the task before us is daunting, but the stakes are too high for us to falter. Together we can shape a brighter future for generations to come. Together we can build a world where every child has the opportunity to fulfill his or her potential, where every family can live in dignity and security, and where every nation can achieve sustainable development. Let us seize this moment, let us rise to the challenge, and let us make history. I thank you for your attention.